Good morning, or depending on you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and I was always told I had a voice of radio, so today, I'm going to be showcasing another Pokemon that I don't like very much. The card is fine, the card is good, the card gets its own video, because it's a useful card that has uses, and I think could be very useful. But Mandibuzz as a Pokemon is just never one I've been particularly excited about. It's just it's just not a cool-looking Pokemon to me. Although, this particular artwork is, as far as I'm concerned, the best Mandibuzz artwork we've ever had, for what that's worth. Now, there's some good things about this. 120 HP is not one of them. It's alright for a Stage 1. It's about standard. The issue here is, well, it's, it's not actually out of range of very much. Because you're going to be one hit KO'd by Zoroark. Which sucks, because I assure you, ladies and gentlemen, Z Zoroark ain't going anywhere. So that's a little bit of a pain. You would be one hit KO'd by Baby Buzzwell Hainick when you've got four prizes remaining, except that you've got a resistance to fighting, and the resistance to fighting is awesome. It means Big Daddy Buzzwell's going to be doing very little damage. It means a little baby Buzzwall is not going to be getting a one-hit KO if you've got four prizes remaining. Oh, no, wait, they do actually play Dianti Prism Star, so they can still get a one-hit KO for one energy. Boo! The weakness to lightning used to be really good, but now recently we've had a whole bunch of cards, well, but none of them have actually been released yet, but they're all coming out soon, like Thunder Mountain which reduces the attack cost of lightning Pokemon by one lightning energy. Zero Aura that gives free retreat to any Pokemon with lightning energy attached, and especially Electro Power. Because you see, Electro Power adds 30 damage to the attacks of lightning Pokemon. So if you find a lightning Pokemon that's doing 30 damage, like, I don't know, Amphros that we looked at the other day, Galvantula that we looked at the other day, then all of a sudden, you add a single Electro Power, they're doing 60, doubled for weaknesses, 120. That ain't good. Although being a Darkness Pokemon, you are hitting weakness against Bayonet, which did very well at Philadelphia Regionals recently. I believe it took third place. And you get access to Devoured Field to do an extra 10 damage, which is quite nice. And though it's not out yet, we are getting Black Market Prism Star, which means uh, if your Darkness Pokemon have Darkness Energy attached, they give up one fewer prize. So a Mandibuzz here with a Darkness Energy attached will not give up a prize just so long as there's a Black Market Prism Star in play. So with all the basics out of the way, we need to go to the attacks. And just a quick reminder, as always, there will be timestamps in the description so you can jump straight to whatever you want in terms of attacks. The first one here is the one that really stands out as pretty gosh darned awesome. One Darkness Energy... Discard an item card from your hand if you do. This attack does 60 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. Do not apply weakness or resistance for this attack. Now that's really upsetting because otherwise with a choice band you'd be getting a one hit KO on a Dawn Wings Necrozma. With a Devoured Field you'd be getting a one hit KO on a Bayonet. But you're not actually hitting for weakness on this attack which is the better attack. It's a little bit upsetting. Going to be honest with you here, little bit upsetting. But it isn't really an attack the active kind of attack. This is a drop 60 damage on one of your opponent's bench Pokemon kind of attack. And for that, it's wonderful. Because there are a lot of Pokemon around at the moment that have 60 HP evolving Pokemon. Zoroark still is everywhere, and I don't think that's going away anytime soon. And oh, look. It evolves from Zorua, which has 60 HP. Malamar is one of the top decks in the format because of its ridiculous ability to accelerate energy, and would you believe it? Inke, from which it evolves, has 60 HP. Lycanroc has a 70 HP Rockruff, but then again, the 60 HP Rockruff has Corner, which is a better attack. And the one thing that's going to make Mandibuzz better in the future is that Professor Elm's lecture is coming out. Now, Bridget has just rotated, and that's upsetting because lots of people use this to get their basic Pokemon out early in the game. Well, Professor Elm's Lecture is the closest we're getting to a direct replacement. It lets you search your deck for free Pokemon with 60 HP or less and put them into your hand. 
which is going to make people like Rockruff players, for instance, go for 60 HP Rockruff rather than 70, because although 70 is more HP and more survivability and all of that, you run into the awkward situation of you can't get them with Professor Round's lecture. So you're going to find people choosing to play 60 HP basics rather than 70, because that is the moment at which you finally get to actually search it with Professor Round's lecture. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. So that's going to make Mandibars better and better and better as we go along. Now, Wally has rotated out. Wally would make this positively silly. Turn one evolution and just start picking pre-evolutions off the bench, starting from your first turn going second. I mean, you could evolve it turn one with Wally, but you wouldn't be able to attack. But against any deck that's having kind of a slow start, this is phenomenal. And it's not even necessarily a slow start. You're against a Malamar deck, they get an NK down. Or if they've only got one NK down, all you need to do is just get your Mandibuzz out, take it out. And you, there's none of this Guzma to bring it up active every turn malarkey. It's just get them off the bench every turn. I've talked about a whole bunch of Pokemon that do 50 damage to the bench and gone, they need to do 60. 60 is the key here. Well, Mandibuzz comes along and it's like, oh... Ne needs to do 60, you say. Wonderful news. I'm doing 60. But even in the mid-game, maybe they've got one Malamar remaining. They want to get a second. If they put an Inke down, you can just go away from whichever strategy you're going for the time being. So you can whack up uh, Mandibars and just take one off the bench. It means that at any time during the game, if your opponent wants to bench an Inke or a Zorua or whatever, they've got to bench two of them. Because if they only bench one, you can just knock it off the bench with Mandibars and then they don't get any benefit from it. That is what is so great about Mandibars here. It stops your opponent doing their thing. Now don't get me wrong, if they've got a really good start and they get three basics turn one, then you have a turn, then they evolve them all, fine. But if they only have one of the basics they want out, you're rocking. If it's mid-game and they really need another Zoroark and you only put one Zorua down, you're rocking. Now, you do have to discard an item card from your hand, and that is a little bit awkward. Because sometimes you won't have an item card in hand. That's a pain. Sometimes you'll end up only having an Ultra Ball in your hand, but you really want to use that to search for a Pokemon. That's a pain. And let's remember that if you're just binning item cards left, right, and center, Garboda is just going to be like, hello. There's not much you can do about that. It's not always the easiest attack to use. But this doesn't have to be an every turn kind of attack. This is a, my opponent's got evolving Pokemon on the bench. I can take them out in one hit with Mandibuzz. That's what it's good for. And with Black Market Prism Star, you don't even have to give up a prize in the process. So that's quite nice. As for the second attack here, you add a double colorless energy, so it's starting as double colorless, and yes, you can use double colorless. And it does 120 damage to your opponent, 30 damage to yourself. Not liking it. Sure, you're getting one hit KOs on stuff with weakness, your Dawn Wings, Necrozma, your Bayonet. But. No. I mean, look, if you had Choice Banner, Shrine of Punishment, it's going to add up quickly onto GX Pokemon. But there are other things you can do here. I mean, look, for one energy, the new Evil Tal does 30 damage and discards a special energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. That, to me, is a significantly better attack, especially when it's got free retreat. Inexplicable free retreat doesn't make any sense. But it's got free retreat nonetheless. I don't think you want to use Mandibuzz for the second attack. But I think for the first attack, there will be games where you just sit there knocking their 60 HP Pokemon off the bench all game and then winning. And for that reason, I'm giving it free Wossies. Not a stunning every deck card. Not a going to shake up the meta card. But absolutely a you need to have one in your binder because you never know when it's going to be useful. Kind of card. Uh, you never know when you want to take it into a deck kind of card and that ladies and gentlemen is a free wassy card and now it's over to you guys do you think you're ever going to put mandibuzz in a deck can you see games being won because you're picking off your opponent's little pokemon or do you think it's never going to quite be good enough let me know in the comment section go nuts but please remember the rules 
be nice. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcg radio if you want to support the channel get some bonus podcasts and all of that head on over to patreon.com slash ptcg radio where you can do exactly that and do make sure you check out wassy plays at the moment we are covering the transformers tcg in quite a lot of detail and i'll be honest with you ladies and gentlemen it's looking pretty tasty so go over there and check it out but by far the most important thing as always is to look after yourselves until next time thank you very much for watching my name's ross and you've been watching ptcg radio